Hey guys, so I read this article the other day and I thought I'd share a little bit more about how this once related to my life. So the article talks about us humans creating fantasy worlds, like worlds better than God has made it and a more fulfilling life than, than God has given us. Like, have you ever seen a fictional movie and thought, wow, if my life could only be like that. In this one world, you imagine yourself as a, a super successful CEO. And in the other world, you imagine yourself as like the best sports player. And another having some insane superpower, like moving stuff with your brain. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a big Star Wars fan. Um, so I'm going to quote this next part directly from the article. Listen to this. We all have fantasies tempting us away from the life as God has authored it to be to some other life we think would satisfy. In those worlds, our restless longing for more would go quiet for good. Then it goes on and says this, we spend a lifetime pursuing a shadow of which we never see the face. Now that hit me real hard. We were all created with this longing in our hearts for more. And once we achieve that, we tend to ask the question, is that it? And then we go on chasing the next shadow to fill that longing, that empty space inside of you. That longing in us are made to be filled by Jesus Christ. That is how we were originally designed by God when he first created us. So let me tell you a bit more uh, about my life. I literally tried to fill that longing with everything I could get my hands on. Um, I got exposed to pornography when I was 10 years old. And from that, uh, that day on, I was addicted. Thank God, not anymore. Um, I got drunk the first time when I was 16, many more times after that. I smoked my first cigarette when I was 16, I smoked my first joint weed when I was 16, and I had sexual relationships driven by lust and so much more. I misused all of these, these things to try and fill the longing in my heart, but it never worked. I was first in line when the pastor at church asked, who wants to give their life to Jesus that only lasted for about a week or two and then I went back to all the nonsense and tried to fill that longing. The reason it only lasted for a week or two was because I was scared of all these things to get out in the open and be exposed. In other words, fear of man and pride. So I tried to fix everything myself where God just wanted me to come as I am and this went on for many many years. Then in 2019, I went to China for a year to teach English and one night I had a conversation with one of my friends and I can still remember every single word in that conversation. It meant like this. Hey Viangs, you call yourself, you call, you call yourself a Christian, right? I was like, yeah, of course. I go to church, I read my Bible every now and then. Um, I pray before I eat. So yeah, I think I'm a good Christian. And this next question hit me so hard, he asked, Okay, so if you walk out the store and something crazy happens, like you get hit by a bus, because that can happen, right? Um, where are you going? And I honestly couldn't answer that question. Um, on the ride home, I started reflecting on my life and realized that I'm literally making my way to hell because I'm doing all these things that God hates, and yet I call myself a Christian. Um, so a few days or weeks, I think, um, later, we came together again and we watched the sermon of, of Paul Washer. Um, and that was where the penny dropped for me. I encountered Jesus for who he really is and not what the world makes of him. And that was where I saw the light at the end of the tunnel for the very first time. God then started to light up areas in my life that did not line up with his word. And there was a lot. <laughs> and he gave me the responsibility to walk away from it. So I had to repent a lot and walk away from a lot of things that I really liked. At first, it was hard to walk away, but what I gained was so much more. And now I'm on a journey of discovering God's purpose for my life, stepping into his will and his way. And man, it's been so amazing. He is such a good father and he wants to guide us so much more than we want to be guided. He wants to have a personal relationship with each and every one of us. And he wants to be your father. So if you feel like you're in a situation where you're struggling to get out, I really want to encourage you that there is freedom and there is light at the end of the tunnel. His name is Jesus Christ. Be blessed.